Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie, and today we're going to be talking about five different ways of coping in public. Of course, there's a ton of different ways to cope, but I wanted to focus on these five for today. The first one is fidget toys! <laughs> so, I love fidget toys. Fidget toys are amazing. Um, I can't stand still, I can't sit still, so it's kind of awkward when I'm like, you know, sitting in class or something and my legs just like <laughs> shaking and I look around and everyone's just like frozen in time and I'm like, how? How can you do this? Or when I'm standing, I'm just like swaying and like if I'm especially nervous or something, I'm just like, wee! Slide to the left! Slide to the right! Um... Yeah, that happens a lot. So, fidget toys definitely help me not move around <laughs> as much as I would. Um, I could be sitting in class and I could be fidgeting with a pipe cleaner or a last van. I know those are really helpful for me. Um, and it helps me focus. Um, another idea for fidget toys as well is grounding. Fidget toys can be super helpful in grounding when you're like anxious or like feeling depressed or, you know, just can't focus. Um, so for example, with my fidget cube right here, let's say I'm having a hard time to be in the present. I could be like, what color is this fidget cube? What does it feel like? Does it feel smooth, rough? Meditation is number two. Meditation can be really helpful, but it can be also really hard to do in a crowded, loud place, but it's not impossible. If you have headphones and a device, you could plug in and maybe go somewhere else that you can find that maybe have less people in that area, or maybe you could find a place to just walk around and follow the guide through. Let's say you're not in a crowded space and you're just walking in a park. There are a ton of meditations that you can follow along to do along while you're doing that walk. Like, uh, you can listen to it, you can listen for the sounds and just breathe along while you're walking. Or it could, and the meditation could be like, what do you see? Breathe in the air and sorts of things. It can be very helpful to cope in public. Now, sunglasses. <laughs> sunglasses, it's a little bit of a strange one I feel like to bring up but it has helped me in some really good panic attacks <laughs> in public. A counselor once told me that I could wear sunglasses in public, and I was like, what? It, she told me that it can help in public situations and feeling nervous. And so I was like, you know what? I don't have anything to lose. Let's give it a try. So I remember I was walking in public with my sunglasses on, outside and inside, and I noticed it was a lot easier to go outside all of a sudden. So, sunglasses can be very helpful if you're dealing with extreme anxiety to just go outside your house. Now my next favorite skill that I love to use, whether in public or by myself, is distractions. Oh, distractions are amazing, especially when your mind won't stop thinking. <laughs> Distractions. So there's a ton of distractions out there and these are only a few ideas to help get your mind going of what you think you might find helpful. So if you have a device on you in public and you can't really get out of that area but you can be on your phone and stuff, you know, you know those kind of situations, right? There's a ton of apps where you can just play games, right? And you can just focus on the game and try to, you know, just focus. And it can be very helpful. There's also a ton of apps that have multiple games on just a singular app, and it's just a lot of random things. Another idea is playing a game in your head. So there's a lot of games that you can play. So some ideas are I Spy. Let's say you're in a room like, and you're just waiting and you notice some thoughts coming. You could be like, okay, let's try to find something the color green in this room. And then now you're playing a game. Let's try to find something blue, you know? Just sorts of stuff. Do y'all know the game Concentration? You know, I go, this is a game of concentration. You know, it's very fun. And it's fun to also play by yourself. There can be instances where your thoughts can be running again and you'd be like, you know what? Let's name as many cereal brands as I want. So I could be like, Rice Krispies, Fruit Loops, um, 
another game that you could try to do is naming something all by the alphabet. So starting with A, it could be like, okay, what's an animal that starts with A? What's an animal that starts with B? What's an animal that starts with C? And so on. There can also be repetitive games that you just want to get better at. For example, in music, uh, for scales, I could be thinking of one, one, two, one, one, two, three, two, one, and going all the way to uh, the octave. Or if I want a harder challenge, I could do it in solfege. And it's really fun, and it gets my brain thinking and focusing, okay, what comes after one, what comes after two? And it's like, the whole game is become as fast as you can as possible. At least that's my game. <laughs> Another idea can be um, something that I learned from a random book I was reading. This character in the book used three as her, uh, as her one, one, two, three sort of thing. It was, she would always multiply three. So three times one is three. Three times two is six. Three times three is nine. And so on. And it was a really cool strategy that I have taken on too. Because it gets you thinking. Distraction. My final tip here today is the butterfly hug. It's from the therapy EMDR, Eye Movement Desensitization Reprocessing. So the butterfly hug is a bilateral motion like this. It is really helpful and it, the theory is that it activates your entire brain. And as my counselor would say, it helps you get back into a wise mind. But maybe you don't want to do this in public <laughs> because I know I was telling my counselor like that. I'm like, mm, I don't really want to do that in class. <laughs> I think people might look at me a little strangely, you know. So you don't always have to do it like this. Uh, a way that my counselor told me is you could do it on your lap as well, which can be super helpful, especially when you don't have to be noticed by people just going like this, you know? So those are my five tips for coping in public. Do you have any tips? Leave them in the comments below. I'd love to read them and let's help each other out. I hope you all have a great and safe day. Take care. Bye.